nigga big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Hey. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, my dad. Man, hey man, hey man, say man, we got a special guest in here today, man. Mm -hmm. This guy right here, man, you know, entrepreneur, sure. man, this boy here, man, hey man, every time I seen him, he was getting to it. That made me know I had to get mine together, man. Absolutely. My guy, man. Radio Raheem, is in the building. What's going on, baby? What's going down? What's going down, man? man. Definitely a pleasure. Definitely a pleasure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Love the setup. It's man. looking awesome. Well, you you know you you been checking me out for a minute. I've been for checking sure. you out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hey, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. to see you, man. Like when I would see you in the airport or wherever I would see you, you was always grinding, man. And then uh, you always had something to offer, so that's a good thing, you absolutely, know. Absolutely, man. You know what I'm saying? You've been doing your thing for for a good yeah. couple decades, man. You know man? Thank <laughs> God for decades. it, right? Yeah, nah, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And, and I say that, man, because I be like, man, you know, the do the real go getters in the city, they gonna know who each other are, no matter what they gonna know yeah. they done cross paths yeah. you know what I mean like I seen him you know yeah. I might not be stepping the way you stepping but we stepping yeah. and, and we making moves mm -hmm. now we been stepping in the same direction <laughs> you know what I'm saying we getting to the payola that's, that, that's, that, the, one that's thing. the ultimate goal that's the one thing we've been doing <laughs> yes sir Joe. so I know so you about I to go in know, here Here's I want to know about Radio Raheem before you were Radio Raheem before I was before. Radio Raheem Ooh. tell me as far back as you can remember growing up Mom and dad, mm. siblings, the whole works. All right. Well, um, I was born in Japan. So, uh, For real? My mom is Japanese. And my okay. dad's black. And uh, we moved to America when I was like six or seven. Do you remember anything about Japan? Japan? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. You know, really? Japan, I remember, uh, I mean, it was, it was just, I don't know, it was just life out there. You know, it was, it was beautiful. The scenery was beautiful. The people was always nice to me. Can you speak Japanese? Uh, I speak a little bit, not too much, you know, like, you know, just enough to get cussed out by my mom. <laughs> 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 but how was it being raised in a multicultural home? Uh, I mean, it was definitely different. You know, I always felt kind of out of place, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we grew up in on my dad's side, you know, with all the black family. We stayed in Chicago. We stayed in Dallas. And I uh, went to high school and middle school out here in Dallas. So, you know, definitely got to see what Dallas was about. So... It, it was different. It was different, you know. And and then like when I first came to America, it was like I was in the hood, then I was in the country, then I was back in the hood. And then it was <laughs> like the country life was was like chasing farms and chickens and running around catching animals and stuff. The hood life was like dodging bullets, not knowing when I'm gonna get robbed, mm -hmm. walking down the street, you know. So it, it it was like a little bit of both worlds. But it made you the person that you are today. It did. Did yeah. a weird motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Who was hard on your mom or dad? Um, dad. I don't think really neither. You know what I'm saying? It, it was kind of like they just let me run wild for really? a while. You know. Definitely are you the got only my, child? I am the only child. That's so. why I write that. That nigga mm -hmm. spoil. So. That nigga spoil. I just seen I, it right I don't there. Know the about nigga that. spoil, you know man. man. I no, know no, about everybody that. ain't got elephants, nigga. So don't try to play me. Hey, you don't hey, talk hey, about that. The elephants <laughs> didn't come with the spoil. <laughs> it came from the hustle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> definitely had the hustle to buy me some elephants. <laughs> so, tell me something that your um, dad instilled in you as a young child. Um, well, I, I wouldn't really say it's like a dad because I, I didn't have my dad growing up. You know, it was like more like she had different dudes. You know okay. What I'm saying? So I didn't really learn nothing from the different dudes she had. Yeah. You know, but I definitely learned things from like the OGs in the streets and they like really installed like, you know, you just got to protect your home, protect your castle, you know, and just make sure that your family's good. So I always made sure I did that. You but know? you knew your dad, right? Uh, no, nah, I didn't find out about him until I was like 13. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How did that go? Uh, I mean, it, it was like a, it was like you know trying to find out that she was adopted all of a sudden. Like, yeah. Like, Hold on, wait a minute. You my mom? <laughs> Hold on. Man. I don't know what else y'all done lied about all these years. Yeah. But, so uh, you met him at thirteen. Yeah. For the first once time. Once I first found out about him, you know, I met him, and uh, I was like, yeah, this nigga don't look like me. <laughs> We, we don't look the same. <laughs> and, and, but 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 mom said that's what it was. Yeah, she said that's what it was. I had to take her word for it. I was 
tried to look through some birth certificates and I ain't <laughs> seen no names on there. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. So did you, you did you hold a chip on your shoulder uh, because of, you know, oh, the yeah. fact of how all that went down? That's exactly oh, yeah. what I was doing. Oh, it definitely turned me up. It definitely put me on the wrong side of the railroad tracks. I was like, man, fuck. Everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's gangster life from now on. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I get it. Because I was, I, I've been there, man. Once you, uh, even the divorce thing, oh, I, yeah. I, my, my parents divorced mm -hmm. at nine. So it kind of hit you the same way when you split the house up. It's like this nigga here, over here with my mama, my yeah. dad ain't here no more, nigga. Yeah. What? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like everything yeah. seemed like it come crumbling down when you start seeing those those rough patches and no hitting right. those hitting those uh potholes in life. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing else matters after that. You know, it's like shit. What, I don't know. There's yeah, nothing yeah. else going on. You can't believe what nobody say after that. But was you protective over your mom and stuff? I know you had to be coming up like you did. Um, I mean, I don't know. It was really like no love at the house. You know, really, she ain't never told me she loved me. That's the way it be, though, man, because somebody, her parents probably never told him they loved her. Yeah. But yeah, also, the culture has something probably to do with it as well, yeah, too. Like Asian yeah. Culture, they really, it's right. different. They it's really different. Hard. Like, it's well, different. They really hard. Especially on boys. Yeah. So, yeah. but but did, how do you think that, that did that, did you, did, did it do what it's supposed to do? Did it work, nigga? I mean, it definitely made me ruthless. <laughs> okay, then. You know what I'm saying? But when I had my child, like my daughter, like uh, like it was just a weird feeling. Like you know what I'm saying. I, I didn't really know how to like hug Express her. I didn't really know how to love her. Like I didn't really know how to tell her like I loved her because it felt weird. Yeah. Because you know? I and ain't did never you break got through? That. Yeah. That's somewhere. the dope part. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. You know, we we working on it. We working on it. We work in progress. Nah, but, uh, that's good, man. And and this uh, this how I co go down on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. We <laughs> come through like that. To it, well, yeah. no, we we, we definitely want to know. Nah, and shit, nah, 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 I think I think the big thing about us is that that. Other people hear your story and they can they can feel the energy and, and it helps the people to come through different situations. Yeah, yeah, like Mike absolutely. Baddy never told me he loved me, he hugged me either, yeah. nigga. You ain't by yourself. But your mama nigga, did. Yeah, my my mama, she really was mean because I was selling dope. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? My mom had to bail me out of jail a couple times, you know. She so, found drugs under my bed. Guns I felt under my like, bed. Yeah, that's how it go down when you really you're a go getter. See, we mm -hmm. got the same kind of issues, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like like when you come up from a place where you you come from nothing, like I was trying to, you know, I came up in the crack era. Yeah. So, you know, like, it's like, I was like, damn, they out here, these niggas easy. I ain't gonna lie, it felt yeah. like, damn, like I was a superhero in the hood. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I mean, you walk to the <laughs> corner store, you getting candy and crack at yeah, the same everything. time. everything. Whatever you want, right there. So, so, so really, like, when you think about just coming up and, and, and making it out, did you see a lot of people, you know, lose their life and stuff I that happened in the hood? All the time. I mean, shoot, I saw two of I my, did. my close friends murdered in front of me. See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how did it affect you? Fuck me up. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't make you get out of that style, lifestyle. Nah, it didn't. It just made me feel like I just got to be more protected and, and, and really watch my surroundings a lot more yeah. because we kind of like walked into a situation, you know, and it was bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I You get used to it. Yeah. I hate to say it. You really do. You be kind of immune to shit, you know, shit that you should never yeah. really be immune to. You be immune to it. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh, that's a dead body. All right. Oh, that nigga laying on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he laying on the ground. I'm, I'm about to go. You just leave him there. Yeah. I done been there, nigga. Like I gotta go, dude. Oh, nigga, <laughs> I got to go. Like you see two or three people. Then my partner and I tell this story all the time. My partner got out of my car. I don't know if I told it on here before. And stabbed uh -oh. the nigga in the head with a screwdriver. Ooh. And and uh, yeah. Yeah, it happens. Like, yeah. he can go down just like that. And yeah. and you right there in the midst of it. Yeah. What you going to do? Drive. No, we just, we <laughs> did, the fight had just <laughs> took Talk off, really. It. You know what I mean? But it, I'm just no saying, witness. but you hear about stuff the next day, and you be like, damn. You know, you know it was something that you was kind of yeah. close to. Or you to. think it could have been you. Or it could have been you. I done been at different clubs where, I, and I, I I know I told this story where I was at the club and my, I was trying to pull my Cadillac in the front because a nigga named Big Mike over at Bobby's, uh, he always used to punk everybody. He had the gun on him every day. Nigga, move the car. Nigga, get out the way. He trying yeah. to get me in there. You know, I'm running things. Nigga, yeah. get him in there. You nigga, move. And, yeah. and a nigga walked up to him and killed him. Shot him like oh. five, five times and a girl got shot in the neck oh. with a straight bullet. Yeah, I remember that night. My yeah. nigga Mike, man, R.I.P. the Big man, Mike. I don't man. understand. Dallas used to be the wild, wild west. Like it, it wasn't really no 
safe town like the way it is now. Like, yeah. yeah, it was really dangerous. Every, yeah. every side on on each side of Dallas, it was dangerous. That's because most of the time they point the gun and, and they beefing on Instagram and YouTube, and they yeah. not really beefing in the streets like that. They they hard on IG, hard on the Instagram. Yeah. These niggas hard. They point the gun, nigga. I come get you. <laughs> you <laughs> nigga, don't make me come get you. Yeah. And you <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know um, how old were you when uh, and what happened to make you turn like your hustle into a legal hustle? Um, well, I got arrested and I went to the military. And then, military? Um, yeah, I was in the Navy. So when I got into the military, it kind of straightened me out and, you know, really gave me the discipline I always needed because I never got it at home. And uh, it just kind of showed me like a better way. Why did you go to the Navy? Did somebody try to get you in there or you just say, you know what, I'm going to go? Uh, I mean, around the time it was like a program where it was like go to jail or go to the military. Oh, okay. And I was like, let me just go with the, <laughs> you the think one you that slick, sounds right? the best one. Radio, you, know? you think you're slick. You're really <laughs> trying to tell us the Antoine Fisher story, nigga. Don't try to play me, nigga. That's what it felt like. When I watched it, I was like, damn, is that me? <laughs> this shit is crazy. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't getting... Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just messing yeah. with you. Nah, for real, I really did. Like, I related a lot to that movie. It was I crazy. bet you did, man. Except, my, except for me, it wasn't the mother; it was the father for him. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I, I had a cousin. My cousin, when he watched uh, Baby Boy, he it hit him a certain way. Yeah, yeah, because you know the dad, these niggas coming in the house. You know what I'm saying, nigga, Baby Boy. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes a movie will hit you, nigga, and make you say, damn, you know what oh, I'm saying? No. I'm like, man, this nigga did the same thing I did. <laughs> you, you seen know? it in there, didn't you? And I was getting in trouble. I was going to mass all the time. I was like, yo, this nigga ain't going to make it through this. <laughs> How long did you stay in there? Three years, three years. That's dope. That's, yeah. You stayed a good while. I, I stuck it in there for a little while. I went did, to war. You, know? you did? Yeah, they sent me off. To you both be getting a check now. Yeah, nigga. The crazy thing is, I ended up on the military money. Damn, like, like, how is that possible? They gave me a bonus, and it was like, since you didn't complete the whole thing, you got to pay us back that you bonus. You both play crazy right then. You don't get it. Yeah. You supposed to be like, I don't remember nothing. I do. I, nah, there's the gun the smoke over there. I hit the government me. government want their money, they going to get it one way or another. So I was like, shit, just put me on a payment plan. I'm going to get y'all back. Man, but you you know, the one thing dope about you, none of that stuff held you back, man. You a go-getter. So yeah. every time you look around... You like a cat with nine lives, or you mm -hmm. drop him off the roof and he just keep falling to his Shit, feet. I don't nigga. know how many I got left, but I'm <laughs> running on a few right now. <laughs> I nah. ran through a bunch of them. So, so restaurant? You, you I, I'm hearing that you yeah. you got a restaurant uh, about to open, or, or you have y'all did a soft opening? Uh, we just did the soft opening this weekend. Um, it was dope. Everybody came through, showed love, and uh, we're getting ready for the grand opening on the 26th. What's the name of it? It's Bistro 808. Bistro 808. And why a restaurant? Um, well, in the military, I was a cook. Oh. So I was like, you know, when I get out the military, I'm going to own a restaurant, but I ended up owning a studio first mm -hmm. and did the studio for like a good 12 years and then... Around this time, I just found a good opportunity to get on a restaurant. And I made it happen. Yeah. And all the 12 years, you would always cook, and everybody was like, your food is amazing. No, nah, I actually uh, told myself I'm never going to touch a pot in the pan again when I got out the military because I was traumatized because I was like, yo, these motherfuckers had me cooking for 600 people <laughs> all the time. and it's two cooks. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how that's even physically possible, but we had these big bowls and this big spoon and we had to like stir it up yeah, like a witch. Yeah. Trying to cook for everybody, and I was like, man, I'm never doing this shit again. I got war wounds, I got burn marks, my finger done got cut open. Just I'm messing like, with that cooking. Yeah, and then you cooking on a boat, so things are swinging Swing. and flying. You got Did you knives get flying. Uh, you get your sea legs like after the first week, you know. You yeah. just got to start, you know, even things out. But you definitely rocking and rolling the whole time. <laughs> so what are we cooking at this restaurant? Uh, it's international cuisine. So, Jamaican you know, food? Uh, we do got like a little spin to it. The head chef there is a a, a chef from the Caribbean. Okay. okay. So he's from the Virgin Islands. So he brought a lot of his dishes down. And, um, you know, we've been like spicing things up. So we'll have like special things like lobsters and waffles. We'll have mm. certain things like catfish and waffles. Okay. You know, but then we'll add like our own special flavor on top of it that you ain't never had before. And the sauces is what gets you. Well, I'll be, I'm definitely going to, we going to be over there. Mm -hmm. When is that? The 20 what? 
the twenty sixth. I should have been at the solve vote. Now I didn't know. We didn't yeah. know about oh, it. Oh, but no, oh, 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 but I'll be we, there. We locked in. Yeah, I'm. And I'll you be have there. an Instagram and all the social media already. Yeah, it's uh, at Bistro Eight Hundred Eight Dallas. So you just log that in. That way you can see everything that we doing. Make sure y'all follow that. Check that out. That's you do, dope. You do them ads because let me tell you, I I love to see those ads, especially when they have the beautiful picture of the food, and you're just like. Oh, yeah. so, I make my notes Okay I need to go see That restaurant I need yeah. to go see That restaurant Because yeah. the pictures Will I, make I need, you I need to figure out How they get those ads Popped up Because as soon as You think of something It just pops it just, up <laughs> That's called the niggas in your house, house man. Mm-hmm. Them niggas is in your house man. Nah, they I think they in my it's brain your house, Because man. literally I'm walking them down the aisle And I was like Should I man. pick up Toothpaste Listen man. Toothpaste, toothpaste shows up. up You calling it Siri happens. You talking to Alex you, Them niggas is in your house man I don't Listen know man what they doing They in your house We tested these all the time Bro I phone. said Pillar pillars pop up Every damn world yeah. I'm telling you They in your house Now, now, now you don't want to <laughs> believe me There's apps on your phones that I, Look I'm going crazy now See, see these folks see. Done run me crazy Our daughter <laughs> told us Our daughter told us You know like whenever You download an app Or you download anything On your phone They always tell you Accept Whoever reads all of that, except nobody never reads. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's you give true. them permission for so much on yeah. your cell phone, and, everything, and we don't know because we don't read it. We just yeah. like, okay, accept because we want the app. Yeah. Accept. Yeah. yeah, you ain't lying. Yeah. You ain't yeah. lying. You accepting your life. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, only Man, thing if that if that now. app would do what I needed to do, edit, make a collage, nigga, I'm accepting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If that old gonna get me to be able to make a good video, I'm accepting that old. Yeah. I don't know what else it's gonna do in my house, yeah. but I'm accepting it's that thing. To every I don't care. Yeah. I just gotta get my pitch out so, so niggas can know see you, me you on the ground. Your life away, you just gonna accept. <laughs> you it. do like, it too, so don't try to. You just don't talk about it, nigga. You do it. You like yeah. I gotta get that out, man. How you do it? I'm a little bit more skeptical. You, know what you really don't. Like you don't use no apps. Things. I bet you. I pick your phone up right now. You got about four or five of them apps. It's Some of that I don't even probably use. Yeah. You like I had to have that one. Talking about apps, have you done an app for your restaurant yet? That's dope. No, I haven't. I haven't. I never even thought about that. I got a so. dude, man. Because everybody's oh, yeah. doing okay. that now. Let me tell you. An app for the restaurant. Yeah. And oh. everything is um, because there's a, a cookie shop that just opened up in Mesquite somewhere. Yeah. I didn't even know about it till one of them ads came up on yeah. social media. And I'm yeah. like, oh, grand opening is right up the street. Yeah. And they open till 12 midnight. All right. All never right. heard of a cookie yeah. shop that opened till 12 midnight. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so you went on there, you know, you click on it. It takes you straight to the app. You have to go to the app. Okay. Right. Not even a website anymore. Yeah. To the app. And then but you got to download that. Yeah. Okay. But that's I the like same that. way that, uh, like, even, like, Vlad, when our show went viral and mm-hmm. Vlad and Worldstar picked it up, uh, you go, you have to go click, they, it goes straight to their website. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. everybody doing things to try to control the narrative, man. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Go ahead. <laughs> what made y'all start this? This, this is like... I think you just popped up out of nowhere with this. First thing I see you on a plane selling clothes, and we going to Magic and Agenda together, and now I see you got the podcast yeah, popping, yeah, you yeah, got celebrities yeah, pulling yeah, up, yeah. like, you know, you, you're doing your thing. I say, thank you, but the reason we done it, because I like to talk. I always like to talk. You do. So I, so that's the, that was the whole game. Like, I'm good at talking. Yeah. I knew I was good at talking years ago. Like And, and selling. I, I'm And selling. Good at talking and selling. I'm one of the best. I yeah. mean, I did, I, did, I got records on selling stuff in a certain amount of days and time. So right. I, I was like, man, you know, with, the, with COVID coming in and the way things was looking, I had to find a way to be successful in the midst of, you know, in the midst of everybody not going nowhere. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, niggas ain't coming to no store. These niggas got masks on. They scared to go outside. So I said, man, we're going to do a podcast. You remember, I was like, mm-hmm. man, we're going to find a way to get these niggas up in the store. So, right. and, and so it worked. It, right? It, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that was the whole game. So, nah, that's hard. And, but I then like when that. I did it, my partner that played for, the, uh, for, for, played for Philadelphia, he called me. Uh, uh, he was like Baltimore. He played for the Ravens. He was like, "Man, you good at that, man? Damn, you supposed to been doing that all your yeah. life. Like you, you look good doing this. Yeah. Is what you should have been doing." So I got them calls like a lot, right? Like yeah. everybody kept saying the same thing. Like, "Damn, that's what you supposed been doing." Yeah. I watch you every day. Then you start getting people from Africa and all yeah. over the world just all start right. saying, "Hey, you doing a good job?" And you then, know what's man. funny about it? I think God put us through a lot of different things to get you where you need to be because you look at your life and you like I had to go through this to prepare me for where I'm at right now yeah, you know what I mean for sure, for so sure. I really think that that's 
one of the main And then reasons. my wife, you know, they, oh, damn, she beautiful. So, yeah. so, so, so everybody just. And then it's dope. Y'all get to do it together. Man, and we it's kicking it. Like, it's fun. Time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't, we, we doing what we do. Yeah, we I having like a good that. time, man. Like, so. Everybody take notes. Y'all make sure y'all do this. <laughs> do this with your girlfriend or your wife. Start some shit. You know what I'm saying? But we used to always hear it, even with the clothing store. They're like, how can you run a business with him? Why don't you do it by yourself? Or why don't he do it by yourself? Yeah, how can nah. y'all work together? You always hear people say, I can't work with my husband or my boyfriend. We'll get into it all the time. Yeah. We hear it all the time. Yeah, and it's, like best friends. Yeah, we be kicking it. Like it's 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 a chemistry. Like we like to hustle. She'll hustle. Sure. She gonna she gonna go get it. Nah, she'll hard. she'll try to sell some plates or anything. If I'm watching, I'll be like, nah, we ain't doing that. Right, let's turn the cameras on. <laughs> we got some questions for you. you know what I'm yeah, <laughs> but that's but that's the game, man. Like like people be like, where y'all from? We want to hear y'all story. We hear that all the time. Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, it's a blessing to be here. I, really, God got us here. I ain't gonna lie. Um, my kids got to grow up in this store and the other Dope. stores that we've had, Dope. and they basically know how to run these cameras. They just quit on me. You just cut, missed them about yeah. two months mm -hmm. ago. Okay. They used to be here all the time. They yeah. quit. They they, they quit. didn't care nothing about the road. They didn't care nothing about you little running. They didn't you care. They, 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 they no, they, about, they get money. They don't give a damn nah, about no money, man. You wasn't paying bro, them you can pay them. They these they niggas pay them off dog. fruit snacks no more. They spoil, bro. They said no more fruit snacks payments from you. They don't give a damn about the money. You know, these niggas spoil, bro. They've been making money here a long time, so they think they they don't really they can make money when they want to. They come up here, make their little money, and leave. But I'm for the I'm I'm locking the doors down. Locking but the you know what I what I think about too with that question you asked. But the true meaning of an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is you always find different avenues. Different avenues. You right. do the same thing. That's true. Even if you mastered one and you have that one, you yeah. you gotta turn and create another one and then another one. Nah, that's true. That's yeah. true. If you what? come to my studio, you, you'll see it's about seven different ways of making money. <laughs> you know what I'm Maybe more. I don't even know how, how many is it. Is it good man, to make money at the studio? Let, let's talk about that studio, man. Let's talk about the startup. Like when you first started, how hard, how difficult was it to establish that and and make people believe that you were serious about and it? And why did you choose that avenue at that time? Well, um, yeah, when I first started, like you know, I was thinking about moving it to like Atlanta, doing it in LA, and I actually had like some big investors that was willing to put up a lot of money for it. But I really wanted to build something close to my daughter because you know I just had my daughter around nope. that time, so she was like around two or three years old. So I was like, you know, let me build something that she can enjoy and she can grow up in. And you know, I made her a little office in there, and we just started building it. And you know, it just kept growing and growing and growing. But I always wanted to keep it like safe. Because you know studios are the most dangerous places mm -hmm. you could be at. You yeah, know? yeah. So I made bulletproof sure. windows. Uh, not bulletproof <laughs> windows, but you know, there's definitely cameras on every block, every block on every yeah. corner, every every section of the studio, and it, you know, it's cage doors. Everything's okay. locked up, okay. so you can see a person coming from a mile, mile away. away. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, at the end of the day, it was just something I felt like Dallas needed. You know, Dallas need culture. You know, when you think about Dallas, like what is our culture? Yeah. You know, like what what do really Dallas stand for beyond the Cowboys? Yeah. You know, and not too many people could say anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like you gotta have more things here that's developing the culture, you know, and just keeping everybody together and bridging gaps and, you know, just bringing unity in the city. What were some of the roadblocks that you hit though, like early on? Uh, I mean, you always got the hate, you know, you always got the people that say, you know, I could do what you do or the people that say, you know, let me uh, take this idea from you and take this idea and then they try to duplicate the idea. But, you know, I've had that studio for 12 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me to be there 12 years, it must be doing something. Exactly. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Um, so when you think about just uh, other studios that have popped up, the competitors, um, where did you feel like you stood? Like, you, was it a competition at any time or was there any competition? Or? Well, honestly, I never thought of anything being a competition because, like, everything I did was, like, in-house. And I messed with cool. a lot of people people like outside of Dallas. So my goal was trying to bring people from outside to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then that way they can intermingle with a lot of the Dallas people. Because okay. when people think of Texas, they don't think of Dallas. They think of Houston. Yeah. You know, anytime when I'm in Atlanta, be like, hey, you been to Texas? Oh yeah, I've been to Houston. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. You know, but they'll never say I've been to Dallas. Mm -mm. You know, so it's like, okay, we need to change that. Who are some of the big artists that then showed up at your studio? Man, I mean. Just, some of the big ones. Just within the last year, you know, we done had Young Dolph there, Key okay. Block there, Murray, we done had Mooney Long, we done had uh, NLE Chopper, 
And, um, you know, we done had Cameron, we done had Dipset, we done had Post Malone, we done had Dave's Loaf. Uh, Damn. Yeah, we done had a lot of some heavy names. Yeah, we done had a lot of heavy hitters. Well, no, no, this this guy been working a long time. So I remember when I seen it, I was like, man, where you going to the studio? He's like, I own a studio. I was like, damn, (laughs) I got that on tape. You know it too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, one thing I did was always keep some cameras around if you really think about it. You did. (laughs) You always had a camera in somebody's Somebody's holding a camera around somewhere. That's the way you have to be, man. I like that. Because you like, okay, something special might be about to happen. Like, I can pull that. As soon as uh, Chris was over here, shout out Chris Justice, and he was like, uh, you know, uh, I went to a restaurant. This dude named Radio. I said, Radio? Yeah. I said, I pulled my phone. I started flipping through. I said, I know the radio. This radio? I hit the button. You popped up. Me and you yeah. was talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, you remember I made that video <laughs> yeah, for it. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, yeah. I was like, damn. I said, man, give me his number. Go. He said, I'm going to go over there tonight because he really fat. He been, he been with me ever since he was a kid. He been around me. Oh, so it's like, he said, I'm going over there. Yeah. And did he come over there? Or, uh, or he didn't come back. I think he did. Come yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris, something else, but he he's like security, so okay. he always working. Yeah, man, the studio's crazy. You know, it's five thousand square feet, so it's a bunch of things going on. Five thousand square That's feet big. is big. That's huge. Feet. Did you build it out, or was it built uh, it out from the ground up, man? It was a big eggshell. Wow. Yeah, if you go on YouTube, Never Satisfied Life, and you just scroll all the way down, like you'll see like the beginning stages and us like building out the studio and putting up the walls and putting up the floors, like everything. So was it contractors or was some of your main, like like any of the guys that helped you from the beginning have been with you throughout the whole time? Uh, yeah, it was a lot of the people that was here with me the whole time. Like my right-hand man, which is the one um, that I kind of like did everything with, and he was the first person I put on the team, which is Ian. Okay. Ian Brown, and um, that was like my right-hand man, but he passed away like wow, five years ago. So, you know, that was a big hit for me, and it, it damn near took me out. You know, I ain't going to lie. Like it, it made me like damn near quit everything and yeah. like go back to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, fuck all this shit. Yeah. But uh, something kind of like led me to be like, you know, don't do that just yet. Yeah. You know, try something else. And it just persuaded me to move to Atlanta. And when I moved to Atlanta, like I got to see what teamwork really looked like. Yeah, I got to see how like everybody really fuck with each other and mm-hmm. like really build with each other and like just do like what Dallas is supposed to be doing. And once I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Dallas another go. Take that blueprint and take it home. Yeah, and I literally, like, left Atlanta, came back, and, like, as soon as I came back, COVID hit. So wow. then it was like, okay, this was perfect timing because mm-hmm. I could have been out there during COVID, but came back, started building up my team. Now we got the, the Dream Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Shout out to the Dream Shout Squad, the man. Dream squad. Everybody that's on the team, man, holding yeah. it down. Yeah, and a lot mm-hmm. of these people here, man, these are the main reasons why – you know, I really wanted to come back, you know okay. what I'm saying, and, and wanted to, to really make this happen, and they helped me a lot, you know, mentally, spiritually, you know, physically, financially, just to really, like, be motivated to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have a, a good, strong team with you, uh, uh, backing you, or are you backing them? However it go, you got to have the right group of people with That's you. That's true. Absolutely. Because if, without it... It, it, it makes it way more difficult to even, you know, I, my my team, most of my family, I ain't going to lie, my kids, my yeah. wife, and, and you've seen that throughout the years, yeah. and a couple of cats. I got a couple of niggas that you really won't see on this camera. They yeah. ain't coming up for a nigga, but don't get it twisted. Yeah. But we we cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, it is good to have a good team with oh, you, yeah. man, and and, that, and, and that's a proud make look. The dream work. So, how was Atlanta like? Like when you say what was what which studio down there stood out? You know, shout out to Zay Tobin and the niggas that be hitting me back on the DM. You other niggas, y'all know who y'all is. Quit trying to ignore the <laughs> truth, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, how was it down there? Nah, it was dope, man. You know, I got to see Outkast, you know, and Big Boy in his that's studio. Dope. I got to see uh, Think It's a Game. Got to see uh, quality control, you know, got to see a lot of like big studios out there and like see how they team really work together and just really like break bread with each other, you know. And the biggest difference I saw is like, you know, people in Dallas, we like to fight over a hundred dollars. Yeah. Literally Mm -hmm. fight over a hundred dollars. I kill you over a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like they're trying to get a hundred dollars of a hundred percent and break off nobody 
Yeah. In Atlanta, they're trying to get $10 million and get 10% and break off everybody. Everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, to where everybody in the camp is millionaires. Yeah. But you'll have someone in Dallas where they'll get like $10 million and be like, all right, I'm going to give a couple hundred dollars to these people yeah. right here. Yeah, exactly. So how do we change that narrative? You know, I'm one of the big guys that come at you with the, how do we change that? I mean, I feel like the biggest thing is a structure, you know, organization, education, you know, just really teaching people how to do business because, you know, Dallas 30 years ago was a country city. Yeah. You know, it was really country minded. You know, a lot of this was farmland, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't as developed as it was now. So, you know, I feel like we just got to kind of create the generation to where it's like, all right. Now let's teach the generation mm -hmm. on how to break bread with each other yeah. because nobody really taught us. Even when we was hustling, like what was we hustling for? Yeah, no, I just had a lot of cars. I didn't even buy a house. Nigga. So we I was just hustling. Had a lot of money. We was hustling. Hundred thousand in the roof, nigga. Yeah. No, no car, nothing else. See? Let me quit talking. These cameras, <laughs> but nigga didn't have no. Yeah, mama just mad. Why you got ten cars in the yeah. yard, nigga? I don't care, nigga. And I ain't I gonna got, lie, I was the same <laughs> way. You know, we didn't know. It went from ten bikes to ten, <laughs> ten cars. <laughs> <laughs> just doing something because we, but we were hustlers. It was yeah. in us, but we didn't really just. I didn't know. I didn't know what what to do with that. I just felt like I was the man, nigga. I pull out. I pull out five thousand dollars to buy a penny piece of candy, nigga. Yeah. I'm crazy, nigga. You know See, what I'm saying? <laughs> but in, in Atlanta, I felt like their OGs taught them instead of going and buying ten cars, let's go buy ten businesses. That's dope. Mm -hmm. you know investing. What I'm saying? And let's invest in the people around us because mm -hmm. the people around us are professionals. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they actually went to school out there. There's a lot of, you know, black colleges out there. So they're all educated. They all got to understand, like, all right, this is mm -hmm. what I went to school for. Now I just need the funding. So the dope boys got the funding. Yeah. They put up the money and they be like, all right, you want that beauty salon? Boom. All right, you want that store? Boom. All right, you want that studio? Boom. Now let's do the business. So everybody's working together, breaking bread with each other to where now everybody's pulling up with their own cards. But you say that, but then a lot of this stuff happened also with the music, the entrepreneurship. A lot of that was done with the music and with the with the with the, with the 360 deals these niggas was getting. They was they was mad about the 360 deal, but these niggas were getting money. Yeah. It was a bunch of that happening as well. And so they that how did that play a part in it? Because we know it happened because it was a lot of money get divvied out. These niggas were getting thirty million dollars from these major uh, uh, Universal and all these different. I remember uh, shout out to my boy George Lopez here yeah. who had gotten we me and him were going to lunch uh, after this time. I, I'm talking too much, but <laughs> but that's my guy. And, yeah. and 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 you know you get a big bag, yeah. uh, uh, and then you go out and do different things with it as well. How do you think that played a part in in, in the whole scheme of things I for mean, Atlanta? I mean, I feel like for Atlanta, like, you know, when they were breaking bread with each other, they just had, like, a, a different understanding. Like, you know, we're trying to create longevity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to just run through this money and just go broke or just misuse this money. So even when they did get a 360 deal or a best up deal, they knew what they had to do to get out the deal. Okay. So they worked their way out of a deal, and they got the fame, they got the money, and they were able to, like, have all their percentage back. Okay. So a lot of times, like, people don't realize, like, the first deal you sign is going to be the worst deal. For sure. The second deal is going to be a little better. Okay. Third deal going to be even better. Fourth deal, shit, it might not even really be too much of a deal because now you already on top. Get it. I but get if you it. don't get to a deal and you try to just make the deal yourself, that's when you end up working till you, like, 40-something, trying to fund your music career and nobody's putting you on because every chance that you tick, you deny because you learned from the internet, oh, I ain't signing nobody, I ain't doing no deal, oh, I'm just staying independent. Like, nah, like, someone gotta believe in you and put up money behind you. Mm -hmm. Because if you ain't got the money, someone gotta put up the money behind you. Same thing with a business. You're right. You know, you can't start a business without money. You gotta I don't have. care who you is, either the bank gonna loan you money, and the bank got the fucked up deal. They got the How much percentage does the bank they get if they loan nothing. you some money to start up a business? They fit to go at you with that interest I, rate. I took 50000 from the bank, and the bank said I owe them 300000 mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So think about that as your first deal. Yeah. 50, I owe them 300 and I'm like, yo, I need to pay these niggas back ASAP because this interest is going up. Going up. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep, yep. See, that's why I love to like pay it off and say, hey, apply the principal, apply the principal. Yeah. I don't want to pay this interest because that's where most so, of the money comes so in. So you got to think the same thing in your music career. 
let me go ahead and pay this deal off mm -hmm. so that way the person that believed in me first, then we could renegotiate the deal, and now the deal is even better. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of people. I, I had run in with dude tell me you crazy man because I, I I feel like if you if you if you buy something you should be able to afford it. So if you got money you don't need credit. Yeah. I'll be on I'll be on it like that. Like yeah. nigga I'm gonna put up to fifty. I'm gonna nah, put up to hundred. Credit, you know, but credit because people, up the world. but a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I heard some, I heard a, it was an officer. I was getting my hair cut. He was like, "You crazy for thinking like that?" I'm like, "Nigga, we and you on two different pages." I feel like a nigga got to be a boss. He got to put that money up. And yeah. growing up in and Jamaica, how you gonna get it? You're like, nigga, yeah. I'm gonna go get it. Nah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just being real. That's how you got to think if you want to really elevate quick and not like some people be like, if you get in business, you up for your first three, four years, you ain't gonna make no money. No, hell no. I'm not getting <laughs> no business like that. I'm making money out the dough. Yeah. Mm. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't think like that because yeah. I'm thinking of trying to do Cause, something cause great, you, nigga. you might be feeding a dead horse. It's, <laughs> exactly. And that motherfucker never come back alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you, when you talk, and, and you, so, I, yeah, you know you want to ask something. So, um, I seen you over looking at it like, this nigga gonna shut up or not? You know? <laughs> So, um, how do you keep your studio up to date? Like, how often do you update like your equipment? Like, what do you? What kind of equipment do you have now? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a uh, a lot of money. You know, <laughs> every few years you dumping out like a cool hundred thousand, couple hundred thousand, just buying new equipment, buying new cameras, buying uh, the new software, the new programs. Like, you know, you always got to keep updating what's going on and keep expanding. So, you know, it's, it's, it's never ending game of how much money you're putting into a studio. But also at the same time, it's just like you got to be chasing the bag. So as long as you're chasing the bag, it don't really matter, like, how much money you're putting in because you're still getting it back. Yeah. Okay, because what, when it, the reason why I ask that, because when I think about the artists that comes to the studios, especially the bigger ones, they're always looking for – the ones that are up to date with yeah, the high tech, everything. Oh, yeah. You know nah, what they, I mean? They, to give they the best They want quality. Sound. They don't want that, uh, let me be in your closet recording, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and put up some eggshells up at the top, you know. They don't want that. They want that quality. Make sure that you, you put in that time and that effort because I always say, if I'm going to eat at a restaurant and spend $200 for my meal, it got to look good. Yeah. Not only look good, it got to taste good. Yeah. I don't always care about the looking good. I'm I'm care about the tasting good. Well, it's a bonus when it tastes good because sometimes you go to them fine dine restaurants. That'd be the worst. Like, mm -hmm. You get a little, you get a little get plate a little like this. Like, oh, that always not. That's a, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I done seen this for years. You niggas lying. You know that food ain't good. Y'all <laughs> yeah. spend a lot of money for some crap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you get the little bitty steak. The more it costs, the smaller it get. Exactly. You paying for the name though. Playing games with me, <laughs> man. Nah, you paying you paying for the name. The yeah. name that's on that building when you walk in, that's what yeah. you're paying no, for. No, I ain't paying, I'm making a mistake at the house, Instagram picture. You're paying for the Instagram <laughs> picture. It's $200 to snap that. Say, so, post it. Let me ask you this. Like, uh, so, Dallas, you know, you said Dolph earlier, he had been to the studio. How did that affect you, you know, when Dolph passed away? Was he somebody that you talked to or you did, he did a business deal? No, nah, um, we, we actually got to be on stage together and we talked and, um, you know, and uh, I mean, it's just crazy to see like you know he's, he's a lot older but he's doing the same thing that I'm doing in my city you know what I'm saying yeah. so it's like for him to be doing that in his city and put on for a lot of people in his city and really get it from like the ground up and really like learn business for his people and then to see his people take him out like that just kind of like Messes you up, be like, damn, like, mm -hmm. shit, is that gonna happen in my own city? Man, you know? it, it, it's it, it, it's how a do lot. you prevent that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because always watching your back. You you can watch your back as much as you want, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, nigga can get you from across yeah, the street. Yeah, nigga. don't you know, play. You, yeah, you, nigga you, get you, you scope you. You scope only you. got a, a one eighty view. You know what I'm saying? You can't see what's behind you. You nigga know, nigga will scope you. You better be prayed up. Yeah, mm. you better have some faith. Yeah. That's what the problem is. People don't you don't understand. You got to have faith. One day you're here, and then and the next day you're gone. Like I've been uh -huh. saying on that pimp song in UGK. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you just need to get your house in order. Yeah. Being real, always be be a uh, to understand that yeah you it, every day every day is a blessing let I, me take I it that say, one man, time you gotta yeah. hope i always say you gotta hope for the best and prepare for the worst there you go every day every time you step out you got to be prepared for the worst you know so when i'm moving around i'm thinking like all right I gotta make sure all my equipment is, is yeah is on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I got yeah. my phone, 
like I'm a key. Yeah, got that thing. Going, uh-huh. Everything got <laughs> it. Everything on me. Like, yeah. And then I got to make sure, where am I going today? I, mm-hmm. if I go to this place. What threats can I run into? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like you got to kind of plan out your day and plan out what you're doing when you're moving around. And then also, like, if you got money, plan out what car you're going to drive. Yeah. Because certain cars going to attract certain you ain't attention. You got to tell me. And don't drive the same car all the time. Exactly. Well, which I don't understand why people do you that. Sca- you know, you got to realize, man, uh, and I, I hate this. Dolph had a, a, a camouflage Lambo and all kind of stuff that says this is Dolph. And you it's know? very distinctive. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and, every one of his cars matched. And, and mm-hmm. that's the part where, where people be like, well, they set him up. Well, if you're at home and, and everybody know how you're looking, it's it, it, it's it's just something, man. That's why I had Chris on the show, the the guy that's a it's security. You know, yeah. like if you got a guy like that with you, and it don't even cost that much, this guy's supposed to be watching for that and wanting that kind of smoke. Yeah. I'm being real. Yeah. Um, and you know you got this kind of money, but you get comfortable yeah. at, in your own place. I mean, you got to realize it ain't just him. You got all type of people. Uh, when Mo three passed away, he, mm-hmm. he it, it was a weird look to me. Like, yeah. damn. Not how he look. This don't look like it should be even happening this yeah. way. I'm being real. Like I see him in the kitchen one way, and then then like this, it, it didn't match for me. Yeah. So or or you you could keep going. That guy, uh, the great. You remember him? Uh, he was out of uh, all my life. I hustled. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. He died yeah. at the Waffle House. He yeah. got killed in New Orleans. Yeah. Or or that boy Pop Smoke. I can keep King going. Von. Yeah, King Von. Like well, King Von. They was out. They they scuffling a little bit, rumbling a little bit. But I, I'm talking about just damn. Like yeah. it happened in your and you not expecting it to yeah. happen that way. Yeah, that's usually how it happens. You know, the unexpected is is how they get you. Yeah, but so you say Dallas. You you think you you want to try to pull this thing together and make it to where everybody can look out for each other. That's what I've been trying to do. But don't you think that. You got people that's in position here in the city uh, that benefits from it being the way it is. Oh, they definitely do. You know the. Blogger, oh, I got the I got down do. then, then yeah. nigga. I got down then, nigga. Yeah, they nigga, I came do. in with the blow then, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, nigga. It's some niggas just set in position that if it changes, they lose money, so they don't want to see it change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about them niggas? I mean, honestly, you know, them <laughs> niggas going to have to figure out something, too. You know what I'm saying? But you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you ho- change ho- the- Hopefully, you know, I say if everybody in the city has something popping going on and every label in the city was making millions, you know what I'm saying? Not every, but, you know, good select good few, mm-hmm. a good chunk of few, you know what I'm saying? All them people that is thriving off of the things that's negative can thrive on something that's positive. Because now, like, the labels can give you the money, what you've been looking for. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to wait for something bad to happen to make money mm-hmm. compared to just having something good that's always happening and now you making money all the time. You know, people got to really look at it like, all right, I want to get money all the time, not just when something bad is happening. Or, yeah, or, when or if you have or, more people who want to see the city come together rather yeah. than like, then they can all come together and overpower that person that's just you know wanting. Well, what and about a label like like uh, there's no major label. Yeah. In in in, in when Dallas. you look at at Atlanta, well, you got satisfied. QC, never you got satisfied. all these different big labels that everybody just bam. I'm ne- all, never uh, satisfied. Okay, okay, I'm never. just saying. Never. Oh, so this is where we're going with it. This so so how many how many it. artists, local artists that you you feel is hot? I know Big X the Plug mentioned you the other day when oh, he was yeah. on my show. Yeah. And he's hot. Uh, he's yeah, he's that, that, nigga, that nigga voice deep as hell. That nigga talk like this. <laughs> 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 now, Big X the Plug, man, he's doing his thing, man. Shout out to Big X, man. I love his movement. I love what he's doing. And, and just the fact that, like, we did a showcase to see who is the hottest artist in the city. And he won the showcase at Dallas. And like to see him blow up from there, I think that's awesome. Man, I, I definitely agree with you. And he's humble. He's really yeah, humble. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he's cool, laid back, chill. And like the dope part about him is like when he did pop off, he was like, you know what? I don't want to work with all these big superstars and these big uh, producers. I want to work with the people that put me on. Mm-hmm. I don't want to work with the people that put me in that position. So one of our producers that I signed, which is Dialogue, he was like, I'm taking dialogue everywhere I go. Wow, he was like, cool. I only want production from him because he's the reason why I got signed. So why would I go work with 
Beethoven or yeah, you know yeah. any right. of those other big any names. Any of those other big names. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I like that. I, so when he did that, I respect him a lot but that's, more. That's that's what made Atlanta like it was too. That yeah. that, that they stuck with their producers and they yeah. stuck behind the people who made them who they were. Yeah. So that's a start. Yeah, that um, was a start. That who was else? A start. Who else put you in the mind of uh, of like a, a big extra plug that's that's young, that's come up and coming in right Dallas. now in Dallas um, or in Fort Worth? Well, it's a couple Male or people. female. Or in East Texas. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a couple people I'm looking to sign, you know, and there's a couple people that I have signed. So, you know, I've signed Lardy, Lardy B. Okay. You know, she's a, a female artist. and uh, Rapper? She's a rapper and a singer. And singer. You know, mm -hmm. so definitely check her out on, on, on her page, Lardy. So when you think about the Dallas movement and, and, and you've seen the Dallas boogie movement and yeah. all the other stuff that was going on and it's transpired and moved and moved. Yeah. Um, so are you good with where the sound of the music is coming, uh, is sounding coming out of Dallas? I mean, I feel like like the Dallas boogie, I feel like that's dope. You know, it's cool. Everybody vibe to it. Everybody did the stinky leg. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it's a short life. You okay. know, the life don't last long. Okay. So it's like, what are you going to do beyond a dance song? Okay. You know, you got to have a culture, you know, and culture is to me is like, you know, how do you create the Houston culture? Yeah. Houston has a whole culture that has nothing to do about dancing. It has everything to do about what they riding, mm. what they doing. I hear you, dude. They, they haircut. You ain't never seen yeah, you with the booty. Music. You ain't never had a booty, nigga. I mean. You ain't never, I never seen you with the booty, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't never had the booty. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that was a part of of a, of a, of, of, a, a of, of the culture here, yeah. right? But I had the swingers. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Dallas, Dallas was known for the swingers. So you had Dallas them. was known for the leather pants. You know, I had <laughs> yeah, the boys had the leather, leather pants. pants. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. big buckle, heavy belt buckles. Yeah, know? yeah, that was dope. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I feel like we just gotta have something that the world wanna follow. I get it. You know because, like. We copied a lot of things that we saw. You yeah, know, like yeah, when we yeah. saw LA rocking Chucks, we, we copied. We that. bought Chucks. You know what I'm saying? When we saw New York rocking the snapbacks, you know what I'm saying? And and they got the Tims. Shit, we buying Tims. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But what are we doing in Dallas is making someone in Atlanta want to go buy what we doing? No, no, no. You 100 percent right. See, so you know, same thing in Houston. Everybody got the. The, the cups, you know They got saying? the little cup mm -hmm. with the little, that, yeah, they, they got the, all of them putting money into them yeah. cups. Yeah, so now you see everybody's pouring up. You right. see everybody grilled out now, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Houston started that. Okay. You know, so Dallas just has to, like, be proactive with their movement and their culture and just really to kind of define, like, what are we doing? How mm -hmm. are we stepping out, you know? Okay. And, and we can always reinvent the wheel, you know what I'm saying? It ain't got to be just, like, what we did in the past, like, shit, we, we trendsetters, too. We mm -hmm. pioneers, too. So, you know, we just got to come together and just be like, all right, shit, I like how these young kids moving right here. You know what? I'm going to put them on all the way. We're going to put them on the big stage. We're going to put them on the big screen so that way everybody can see it, you know? And then, shoot, even movies. Movies help culture move a lot. A lot of movies we watch, like Boys in the Hood and things like that, they made us really attracted to that hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what they were living like and how mm -hmm. they were doing you know, and I feel like Dallas needs things like that. You know? Man, that's Radio Raheem, nigga. Y'all yeah. heard it. Y'all heard it. Real fresh, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we need more of that. <laughs> so all them film directors, come on down. And the ones in Dallas, let's work. Come on, man. That'll let's be. And that's where everybody's going now is film. All the comedians, all the rappers, everybody yeah. is branching off into film. And I love the way how Fifty has been putting a lot of people onto his oh, his for film. Sure. And you know working. what I mean? It one Fifty show is one of next. my one of my mentors and one of my like people I look up to, role mm -hmm. model. Him, P. Diddy, you know those people like really created their own wave, you know. And in their wave, like they made everybody else follow it. That's right. it. You That's know. It. So I'm trying to do the same thing with my wave. That's why Never Satisfied is such a big Never thing. Never Satisfied. Me. It's huge because it's like if you satisfied, what's the point of living? I like hey. his name. I want to. I, I want to hear your uh, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Top three artists. Number one. I would say Nas. 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 Number two. Boy, like Nas. You yeah. didn't say Jay Z. You didn't say Jay while ago when you said people you look up to. You don't nah. really mess with Jay Z, nigga. I see that. I you mean, know, Jay, 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 Jay Cool. 
J. Cool, but you know, Nas was always better, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I still like his persona, you know, his demeanor, you know what I'm saying? Nas like, the one, man. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. If I'm gonna go to New York, but you know me, I'm in the South, nigga. It's Pimp C all day, but I'm gonna let you do your for little sure, thing. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I rock with Pimp C. You <laughs> go know what ahead. Saying? Number two. Number two, I, I would say Big Crit. I like Big Crit. Yeah, yeah Big yeah. Crit. I like Big Crit. We've been we've been trying to we, we trying to get him mm -hmm. on the show. So yeah, Big we going at Big Crit. He always got that that classic. Like every time you hear him, every time you see him, he's just on that classic vibe. Like it, it just never will die. You know I what like I'm that. Saying? It just Big keeps Crit. going. Shout Number out Mississippi. Th yeah, Number three. Mississippi. Number three. Number three. I would have to say Drake. Drake. A lot yeah. of people say Drake. That nigga like I, I would ice have water. Nigga, Drake. this. Just real crisp and clean with his whole brand, nigga. Nah, you just, but the this nigga look like an iPhone when he come in the room. <laughs> the nigga just real, yeah, presentable. Nah, the dope part about Drake, man, is the way he move and how I he move with that. his team, how he <laughs> move with his team, it. and how he move with his people. Like I actually OVO. got to like be in Toronto with Drake. You with Drake? Yeah. Oh, I'm jealous now, nigga. Shut these damn cameras. <laughs> <laughs> no, go. Now you with Drake, nigga? Yeah, and like just talk, to see let's him. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. nah. Just to see him in his home city and how his home city treats him. They love him. Like they love him to death. They they call him the boy for a reason. They be like, oh, the boy in the building. You know what I'm saying? And like he got his own special section and every favorite restaurant that he goes like they got everything set up for him like we went to the toronto game during the playoffs and it was like you got your own club in here <laughs> like how does drake have his own club in the stadium and it's like this shit is crazy Damn. he got his whole family in there everybody's watching the game they giving out free drinks free food i'm like man this is dope like man we need to do this in dallas how, how can i call that mark cuban and get on that same Man. level. I, I used to always argue with people about Lil Wayne and, and uh, Baby and uh, Drake and them because I felt like, okay, y'all talk about Birdman and all, and I get it, but... Drake ain't never even had no problem with none of that because that nigga a hustler, man. Yeah. He ain't even let none of that. They like, oh, they taking this, they doing that, and they mad at it. But, and I was like, man, Lil Wayne had that same opportunity, but he was so caught up in his artistry yeah. that he wasn't really on his business like that. Yeah. You got to be able to be a person that juggle things well to do what Drake doing. Oh, yeah. You nah, see what nah. I'm saying? Drake, Drake <laughs> definitely figured you, out the code. You he know, got he, it. He definitely broke the code. But... And, Lil Wayne helped help get him to where he at. So yeah. I get it. But I'm just saying, I think Lil Wayne a whole different level, I think they also level, came man. from two different eras. Though, they did. Know? They did. Mm -hmm. You know, Lil Wayne came from an era where it was a lot more rough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you had to yeah. do a whole lot more flossing. Yeah. You know, they, they invented bling bling. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Drake came in an era where it was like, man, all right, you just got to be saucy. You know what I'm saying? Real long, saucy. As long as you saucy and you take care of your team, you yeah. cool. Yeah. You ain't worried about none of that other stuff. Yeah, no, I get it, man. That, that boy there, he, he ain't miss a beat. He sure will mess with your woman and all that, yeah. Oh, he'll steal your drink. <laughs> one, one thing they told me, it was like radio. <laughs> <laughs> Do not bring anybody you like around Drake. See what I'm saying? If you <laughs> like her and you think she's somebody special, do not bring her around Drake. See what I mean? She will be gone. She'll be in the back room somewhere, and you ain't never gonna see her again. I was like, you know what? Uh -oh. Duly noted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> definitely not bringing on around Drake. Man, so hey, man. So what's your handle on IG, man? To somebody trying to just reach out and say, man, what is? Because I seen the animals, man. That's one thing I want to yeah. ask you before we get off here, man. Right. I seen you with a tiger. Yeah. I seen you with a little thing, a little smaller than a monkey. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I seen you with uh, snakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what? is the thing with you and these damn exotic animals man honestly I, I relate to animals more than i relate to people damn you know i feel like an animal can't lie to me you know they always gonna tell me exactly what they feeling what they thinking you know what i'm saying people they gonna always mislead you lie to you you know take from you an animal they ain't gonna do all that they gonna show you who they really are and if they don't like you they gonna let you know if they fuck with you they gonna let you know you know what I'm saying? What's the craziest incident? Where do you incident? keep all of these? Nah, that nigga got a, a jungle over there somewhere. I don't know what <laughs> Yeah, I want to know where do you keep where all Where you keep these damn animals at, man? I mean, you know, I got a little private sanctuary, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, uh, you know, I definitely rescued a lot of animals, yeah. you know. And, um, How I many actually, do you have? Uh, it's, it's a quite a few, you know, about about the same amount you see in the zoo. Then he got lions over there. But, but like, like I'm, I'm trying to understand, like, what's the craziest thing that's done happened uh, with the animals? Uh, the craziest thing was being on Tiger King. 
Okay. So let's talk about it. You know, uh, we was on Tiger King before Tiger King was ever created. Wow. Mm. And um, we started shooting that show, and we was shooting it for a different reason, you know. And then, like, once the lady got her arm chopped off by the tiger, they pretty much canceled our show. Damn. So we was like, all right. Like, damn. Did and we, you we were, had, and I you mean, just that. a chopped off yeah, arm? Yeah, was there when it happened. I mean, that's all? Just a chopped off? Y'all going to stop us for a chopped Chop. off arm? Yeah. Nigga, y'all both he got to stop. He bit it off. You the hell you? Chopped off. He bit it off? or So the lady, you damn. know. Damn. She had this big jacket on, and mm -hmm. she reached in the cage when she wasn't supposed to. Normally, you have like a little like tool yeah. that you're supposed to reach. She in the cage reached her damn arm. She in trying the cage. to feed a tiger? Is that what she was doing? Yeah, she was trying to feed the tiger, but she reached oh, she in there it. and did it with her hand instead. And the tiger just did one swipe to the arm. Yeah, and just, the arm was laying. Yeah, on that's the what floor. tigers do. Hold on, his nails are that sharp. Yes, his nails that it are, can just. Yeah. Yes. Well, wow! That's but what tigers do. It, 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 it would be like a, nah. a cut or something. Man, you throw a tire, a tire, one of them big Michelin tires in there, and the whole tire is gonna be torn in pieces in like less than ten minutes. Mm. Wow! Because they use those as chew toys, so you know they feel like an arm. Like what is that to a tire? Damn! You know, so once that happened, they were like, "Yep, show's canceled. Y'all mm -hmm. could pack y'all stuff, head home." And we had like all these hard drives and all this footage, and we was like, "Damn, what are we gonna do with this?" And we was like, "Shit, I don't know." Then we started like deleting stuff and putting more stuff on there and filming other stuff because we just had a ton of hard drives with just footage. And you know, he let us keep it. And he was like, "Yeah, I can do whatever y'all want with it. We're not doing the show no more." And then all of a sudden, Netflix hit us up and was like, shit, I heard y'all got some footage. <laughs> Damn. You know, can we use it? And I was like, how much? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How much you paying? That was a blessing in disguise. Oh, yeah, right right at COVID. See, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was right on time. Right on time. <laughs> you probably were like, dang, I shouldn't have deleted some of that stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Man, I, but I was so sick when I found out we deleted it. I was like, yo, everybody fired. <laughs> <laughs> Why would y'all do something like that? So what's the wow. next venture for you? Uh, the next venture, man, just get these artists signed. Like you know, that's, that's, I'm trying, I'm trying to work on a major, major record deal. So I'm just manifesting it right now. I'm looking at a major label deal that's going to open up the floodgates for Dallas and, and I, sign some of the man, biggest artists you've man. seen. Mm. And I can't that's wait. That's my goal. Because I already got my little team together. As soon as for you sure. do it, nigga, I'm knocking on your door. I got people I need you to sign me, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know how the game right, goes. I'm taking this show <laughs> on the road. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, man, thank you, man. I want to know, how many oh, more want? animals do you intend to get? Like, what do you have? Animal. I want to know. What, <laughs> what other, kind of what damn other animal do you want, Do you have a, yeah, yeah. Do you have your eye on? No, my goal is to get a dragon. Giraffe, you know Boy, I want a giraffe. Want, yeah, like I just a want baby a, giraffe. No, nah, they never never want the big head I, giraffe I want with the, the tongue. I want the big giraffe in my backyard because Damn. it's like you know when you showing your house and you doing MTV cribs. He want to be like um, coming to America. He and get he wake he, up and he look out in the backyard. Yeah. He can see all those animals. Wait, wait right there, Akeem. Yeah, yeah, you know I get it. Mean? Just, just be like you know. Let me show you my cars. But oh yeah, I forgot. There's a giraffe in the back, and they be like. Damn. Damn, who got a giraffe? And them giraffes ain't cheap. They, 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 they how cost, much they run? They cost the same amount of a Lamborghini. Damn. The, you same, want to but the, the ship same amount you pay on a Lamborghini, you're going to buy a giraffe. And it probably costs way like a lot to ship them over here. No, it costs a lot to feed them. <laughs> so <laughs> if you get, if you if, when you get ready to buy, you rather buy a giraffe than a Lamborghini, is yeah, what you just yeah, told yeah. me. Yeah, I want a giraffe. Damn. I want a goddamn giraffe. Nigga, you give me that giraffe. Does I'm your putting daughter a, do have love animals Can too? you ride a giraffe around this hole? She do. She <laughs> do. You know, she had a few animals herself. But, uh, you know, I think I kind of like, I don't know. I might have made it bad because she just grew up with animals and you just get so used to it. Yeah. You're like, you know, yeah. I've seen a monkey before. I've seen <laughs> a tiger before. Like, come on, dad. Like, what are you going to do next? You have to like, get her exotic animals, something that. Like, there's you know, nothing yeah. else that you can show me that's different from what I've ever seen. Like, everything I've seen on TV, you got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Hey, man, thank you, man. Uh, sure. uh, man, I, w I just want to tell you, we love you. Hey, love you Without a too, doubt, man. radio. Yeah, I definitely. I'm be honest, it. man. Uh, we I never seen this coming. I appreciate yeah. you for pulling up. For sure. As soon as I called did, did you, did y'all learn something? Man, I learned a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we always you. bumped into each other. We ran into each other about 20 times on the airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, <laughs> nothing like having you on the set. Yeah. This here, this see this spiritual right here, nigga. <laughs> for sure. See, you I like that. I like that. 
I like how you use that word right there. <laughs> People don't understand what spiritual is nowadays. Yeah. And I feel like spiritual is something that we all have to get in touch with. That's it. You know, we've been mentally connected for so long, but when have we ever been spiritually, spiritually connected? connected? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure, man. So let's 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 put that on the next show. You know hey, what I'm saying? Man, like, make a whole show be, about being don't spiritual. Don't let this be your last time coming on Boss Talk 101. Hey, Whenever show. something popping off, got you. you got to show up and I show out, you. right? I if you got, got an you. artist you trying to push, come on. I'm your place to come, man. So that me way. and you, we rocking. When hey. you call me, hey. it's like what? You know, BC them be calling too. It's yeah, certain yeah, niggas yeah, when they yeah. call me, uh, whoever <laughs> called me, if it KLC with Beast by the pound, whoever. So can you take this on the road, nigga? I'm what? Can can you make you this? No, I'm ready, bro. I go you anywhere. Sure? I'm coming. I'm supposed to be going to 1501 Studio, but I got to come to yours too, nigga. There you go. Stop playing. All right. Because they already invited me over nah, there. Nah, nah, nah. We gotta do Never Satisfied first. Okay. Then 1501. Okay. I ain't All tripping. Right. I ain't tripping. I will feel, come I'm through. Feel real disrespectful. Nigga, come on. I know everybody. I ain't tripping. I'm right. That is easy. You here? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, man, it's so much love, man. Texas, that on a whole, we got to try to push this thing up, man, exactly. to where we can bring everybody together and where people be coming down here to come to award shows Absolutely. and everything. I'm talking Absolutely. about major. We and that's something that. that I'm, I'm working on with, a, uh, it was Bobby Hustle, me and him been talking about that because they do it in Houston. Yeah. We need to do something for our artists here, man. Something yeah. to try to show, hey, man, the new ones, hey, these are new and up and coming. Yeah. These here are the ones that are, are solidified, the ones who got, like, there's platinum artists that's that's in the city. Matter of fact, uh, my boy coming tomorrow. Uh, Bobby Billions will be here tomorrow. Okay. Like it, it's platinum. It's people who he's got, gonna be at the studio tomorrow. Yeah, so he coming here first, then he gonna come over to the studio. See, nigga. That's hard. I already knew that. Yeah. I, 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 he doing the listening part over there. The listening part. So he coming here and, first. And everybody need to check out the hub. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. hub is just a dope platform. That Bay Bay put together. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah. And I didn't know it was at your spot. See, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I love what he's doing. And I love how he's bringing the city together. You that's know? what's up. And that's definitely inspiring me to do more just on all avenues of the entertainment industry. So we want to do that for the actors in the city. We want to do that for the models in the city. Like, we want to be able to put platforms together that's going to bring people together and not divide people. Man, I like that. I can end on that note. That nigga yes, did sir. that real smooth. That nigga yes, knew he was in there. They're going to try to end my show, though. Hey, you know boss talk, you know what, what I'm saying? What a boss talk, man. Stop playing. Like, yeah, yeah, the new host. Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you, man, so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, radio. Hey, love y'all too. Hey, man. it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.